Right. Okay. I'm going to read something and forgive me. No. I want to go here. You're face to face with God. <laughs> Bone cancer in children. What's that about? How dare you? Mm. How dare you create a world where there is such misery? That's not our fault. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world so full of injustice and pain? And then one more. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac, utter maniac. Ivan in the Brothers Karamazov. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right. Now it's in, okay. So yes, what happens in the Brothers Karam, Karamazov is that Ivan wins the argument. Yeah. But Elosha is the better person. Completely and, so. Right, and, and we right, love right. him. Right. So it's, yeah. It's a right. book so everyone it's very should interesting. read. I, I would urge right. everyone to read The Brothers Karamazov because I, I do think it's a work of genius. There's a lot about Dostoevsky I really dislike because of his influences. Again, people who don't understand Dostoevsky think he's a champion of right-wing religiosity uh, without understanding that he went through an extraordinary life experience to come to where he did come and that it his novels show his full understanding of all kinds of different points of view. But in terms of the dialectic of of, of that issue about how, how there can be a God. I, I mean, I was answering a question that I was asked. I know, and I'm, I'm not, and trying, I'm not course, really not trying to put you on the my, spot. My point is I don't believe there is such a being. But if there were, and he were the kind of being that has been worshipped and described by various religions around the world, the monotheistic religions, then I would have many bones to pick with him. Um, but of course, I don't believe there is such a thing. But the the argument from evil, as it's known, is a, is a very old one, and, and it goes back through through the, through you know medieval religious figures as well as uh, later humanists that this idea that uh, uh, it is it is very hard to square this loving God who has a knowledge of every hair on our head and adores us and um, and adores little kittens, but he also as I say, bone cancer in, in, in children, but also life cycles of insects that whose whole aim is to burrow into the eyes of children in Africa and and lay their eggs there and cause blindness for those children. I mean, you could quite easily picture a universe in which there weren't such an animal and in which children were not sent blind with pain and horror by the various bugs and fungi, fungi and insects and viruses in the world. There's, there's it, it, a, it isn't there's necessary. A, there's a worm. If, there's a worm in Africa that burrows under the skin, and it's a long worm. And oh, yes. if you, you can pull it out with a pencil and wrap it, but it breaks, it's fragile, and then it gets infected. It's a terrible thing. And a doctor recently made it his life's work to eradicate that and did it successfully. Yeah. And so then I would, so I read what you wrote, and I mean, I, I take it very seriously. And, and I, it wasn't, I wasn't throwing it in your face. No, no. I, I brought it up actually because of what you said about Flaubert's attitude. You know, because what that lacks, what your statement lacks, is exactly what Flaubert highlighted in that woman on her knees. And and I'm not saying this is a simple solution, right? Is no. and, and 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 I would say so. Let's take the argument you made there, and to, there's a, there's a direction that goes in that's nihilistic and resentful and vengeful and angry and all understandable. Yes. But to me counter it doesn't look to me like there's anything good in it it looks like it's entirely counterproductive it 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 makes the problem it purports to uh have been generated by worse mm -hmm. and, and it, it so, it, so the then error. the question is what's the appropriate attitude given that the argument you make is actually an extraordinarily powerful argument and i don't know the answer to that but i but i do know i think that resentment and anger and even the motive that would make you want to say that to God himself, I think that's probably not helpful, <laughs> even though it's so, well, it, I came to that with great difficulty. I mean, I've had my reasons to be resentful and angry, especially recently, and because I'm suffering a lot of pain. Yeah. And yeah. it makes me resentful and angry and wanting to shake my fist. Yeah. But I found upon intense consideration that there was nothing in that that didn't make it worse and that therefore that must be wrong.
That was a clip of a discussion between Jordan Peterson and Stephen Fry, and the video that that clip is from is called Jordan Peterson Confronts Stephen Fry on God is an Utter Maniac, and I will leave a link in the video description of this video to that video if you'd like to watch the entire clip. One of the fascinating things about it is Jordan Peterson, in a sense, is uh, kind of arguing for the existence of God in a way, even though he himself isn't really clearly like a theist. Uh, I, I don't think Jordan Peterson would say hands down he knows that there is a God, but I think Jordan Peterson um, just has this this sense of openness when it comes to the things of God, and I think a lot of people know that. Another interesting thing about this is that Stephen Fry is arguing from uh, the, the, the argument from evil, as it's often called, this idea that how can you say there's a God the way that the Bible describes a good God who is all-powerful when you see so much evil in this world, so many things that just seem wrong to us. And it's interesting that Jordan Peterson doesn't necessarily attack the argument from evil itself, it's more, it seems to me, like he's attacking the attitude of the argument from evil. He sees that as, as a problem in and of itself. So it's a little bit nuanced there. But one of the things uh, I think it's so important to point out is that the argument from evil really can't disprove the existence of God. Uh, and I, I, I did want to make a point about that or a couple points about that. The argument from evil really only proves two things. One is that uh, there actually is a standard by which you are judging everything to be good or evil. And I think that ends up happening in this discussion. You can see that what Jordan Peterson is getting at is that if you're going to talk about good and evil, you're saying those are realities. Those are something worth dealing with, worth working on, that you know, if you're going to use the argument from evil, what you're saying is that's a, that's a reality beyond just the natural world, if you will. It's something that we have to really struggle with and deal with as humans. The other thing I would say about the argument from evil is, again, it doesn't, it doesn't prove that God doesn't exist, but that he doesn't seem good from our perspective is really the only thing that the argument from evil can say that if there is a God, it can't really say there isn't a God, but if there is a God, from our perspective, we would say he doesn't seem good to us. It can't really prove whether he actually is good or evil. It does seem to imply, obviously, that there is such a thing as good and evil, but how do you determine if God is good or evil that's a very significant question because obviously we're talking about it from our perspective. And I think a really important thing to think about, even in our own experience, <clears throat> is how if you talk to children, uh, maybe you have kids or you know people who have kids, and there are times when kids will actually judge their parents based on their limited perspective. And sometimes what kids will say is, my parents, parent, you hate me, or, you know, you, you know, they're obviously saying that the decision that the parent is making is a bad decision, and they are very upset about it. But the reason that they're looking at it that way is because they have a certain vantage point that is different than the vantage point of the parent. So to me, it seems like we have to consider this, and, and that happens in all different ways in life. There are many different scenarios where we will judge things one way from one perspective, but if we had a different perspective, especially if we had a bigger, more knowledgeable perspective, we would probably look at it differently to some degree. And I think what we have to recognize when it comes to understanding theology and the world of biblical theology is that God according to the Bible, has a very different perspective. It is a transcendent perspective. It's an all-knowing perspective. And that perspective is one of the things we have to take into account. And there's a lot of other things that could be said about that too, even God's prerogative, his rights as creator, that sort of thing. But I think, 
you know, I just really wanted to make the point that the argument from evil, and it is said in that video, it is powerful. And, and obviously there's an emotional component that we just have to take very seriously because we all experience evil. But it really doesn't disprove God. And I think that's, that's something that always comes to my mind when people say, well, I, I don't believe in God because there's evil. I think, well, if there's evil, there's good. And, and you're just actually reinforcing a transcendent reality that there's something outside of humans, right? There's this idea of justice. And C.S. Lewis talks about that in Mere Christianity, the classic book that he wrote, a defense or explanation of Christianity. So it doesn't really disprove God. It just upholds the idea of a moral standard, if anything. But also, it really only says what we think about God from our perspective, if there is a God. It's just saying that from our human perspective, it doesn't seem like God is good, but that doesn't really prove anything because we obviously don't have God's perspective. I think what Jordan Peterson does a good job getting at, even in this video clip, if you watch the whole thing, is that maybe there are good purposes that we don't always see. Um, we can partially see it and we can partially experience it, but maybe there are things we're just not seeing from our vantage point as humans. So those are some of my thoughts on this really interesting discussion. I just wanted to share it with all of you because I thought it was fascinating to watch two people who essentially, neither of them clearly believe in God. Uh, Jordan Peterson is much more open to it, obviously, much more open to theism. Stephen Fry, from what I know, absolutely doesn't believe in God. So it's interesting two non-religious people, if you will, talking about the existence of God. And I thought it just brought up some really interesting things that, again, always get me thinking. I like to think through these things myself. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below. But thank you so much for taking some time to look at this subject and listen to some of my thoughts brought to you from a fresh perspective.